A lot of you are starting to play Dungeons and Dragons for the first time. Or there's a lot of you who have been playing for a while, but they've always been wondering, how could they get better? And a lot of people kind of asked me, what could I do to be a better player? And that's actually a really interesting uh, question because it wasn't really something I really, really thought about uh, until it was asked. But I came up with what I believe to be a pretty good set of things to keep in mind when becoming a D&D player that hopefully you can use to improve your game, to have more fun, and to make everyone else who is with you uh, have more fun. But the very first thing that I thought of, because I've dealt with these kind of players, is that when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, be involved with everything that's going on. Like, actively play the game, rather than just kind of going along for the ride. And I've had those players before. If you're kind of new to it, and maybe that's all you're really comfortable with, that's okay. But eventually, get to the point where you're actually really getting into it. For example, uh, a party that I was dungeon mastering uh, throughout 3rd and 3.5 edition, uh, they had a druid with them, and she didn't really do a whole lot aside from just kind of be there and watch what everyone, everyone else was doing, what was happening with the plot and what people were saying. And then when it came to combat, you know, she would do her roles, and that was about it. And that's fine. If you want to, if that's the kind of player you want to be, just a very uh, passive onlooker who sometimes helps fight, you can do that. But man, you would have way more fun if you actually get involved. Start asking questions, investigate into the different areas that you're in, figure out the plot with the other players that you're with. Um, one of the things I really tell people, uh, when it comes to combat is to describe what you're doing in combat rather than just saying rather than just saying your action again going to this druid player i had whenever it came to combat she would say i shoot my bow rolls dice i hit him rolls dice uh seven damage okay i mean yeah that's mechanically what happened or say a uh, fighter just pulls out his sword and says, alright, I swing at, um, 17. Do I hit? Yes? Okay. 13 damage. You know, that's fine. Again, mechanically, that's what happens. But man, would it be way more interesting and involved if the druid said, I knock an arrow into my bowl and I draw the string back and I aim for his exposed, uh, left leg or something. And then the DM could possibly use that. If it gets hit, maybe because she said where she wanted to shoot, the DM could possibly put in a uh, movement penalty or something because she hit him hard enough. Or if this fighter says, I pull out my sword um, and uh, try to go and use, has two attacks at actions, uh, two attacks that round. And he says, uh, I, I go in for a stab at the abdomen and then immediately pull, uh, and immediately pull back out and go for a larger overhead swing. And then that paints a picture in everybody's mind. They're seeing the combat happened before them, and that's way more interesting than just seeing the numbers. Now, a lot of people kind of get caught up in just the numbers. Think about what's happening, think about the actions, think about the, the theater of the mind that's happening before you. And if you're not comfortable doing that quite yet, again, that's okay. That's something you can work up to, but I'm telling you, you'll have a way better time if you are involved as a player. Uh, either yourself as the character, or the other party members, or the plot itself. Just be involved rather than just kind of passively enjoying the game. And if you if you can't do that, work yourself up to it. I swear, it'll be much more enjoyable. And related to uh, describing your actions, whether in combat or not in combat, another great thing you can do is uh, describe your character. This kind of goes back into being involved. Really, let people know how your character is reacting and how your character is feeling. You know, if you just got hit by a dragon breath, you could say, I am terrified, I'm going to go hide behind a rock. That makes sense, rather than just saying like, you, know, you got hit by a dragon breath, I'm like, all right, um, I go over here behind the rock. Okay, because even just saying your character's emotions and feelings will let people further understand why you're doing the things you're doing. So again, back to being active, theater of the mind, 
describe your actions, describe your feelings, let everyone know like what exactly is going on with your characters. If you don't want to be in character and say it out loud, if you got hit by a dragon breath, you don't have to be like, you don't have to say in character, my flesh is singed, I must seek refuge. You, can, you don't have to do that. You can just say, oh, my character feels this, my character does that. You can do that. A lot of people like to get in character. I've done that, especially when I dungeon master. I'd give all the different NPCs voices and whatnot. It's fun. Again, that's something you kind of have to get comfortable with and work up to, but when you do, uh, it can be a lot of fun. So be very descriptive in the things you do, whether it's combat, everything outside of combat, the w how your character feels, the way your character speaks, their uh, emotions or expressions, whatever. Just keep these things in mind as you're playing and you'll have, it'll, it'll paint a better picture of everything that's going on and you'll have more fun. Uh, related to characters, this is something that I have always felt very, very strongly about and it goes against a lot, how a lot of other people feel and that's fine. And this is something I, this is my biggest piece of advice to people. When you're making a brand new uh, character, whether it be for Dungeons and Dragons or anything, rather, don't make the best character. Make an interesting character. And there's a big difference between them. If you go into any kind of rule set or character creation log or whatever, you can kind of see, like, okay, if I have the points and this ability modifier, this will give me the best bonus, and this will allow me to maximize damage if I get this feat. And, you know, that you can do that. I don't think that's interesting. I don't think that's what makes D&D &D fun. If I wanted to play a game where... I just wanted to make sure I got the biggest and highest numbers and all the math is super high and I'm super powerful and doing stuff with damage, then I would go play a video game or Pathfinder. But make an interesting character rather than the best one. As an example of that, the easiest thing you could do is make your character, make him how you normally would or whatever, but make them suck at something. That's, that right away just is way more interesting because then that weakness could be uh, made up for by the other party members. For example, I've, told, I've talked many times about my rogue, Dieth Woodrow. Dieth Woodrow has always been a rogue. You know, he picks locks, he disables traps, he's super stealthy, he can scout ahead, he can do all of that, but he sucks at combat. He is not a fighter. You, uh, I mean, the rules are different now with 5th edition, but 3rd and 3.5, he had a strength of 8. That did not help him hit. That actually gave him negative to damage until he got weapon finesse. But he was not a fighter. He was good at everything outside of that. He was a utility person. He, he got through the locked doors. He made sure the chests weren't trapped. He made sure he could identify some of the more rare uh, items. Uh, and, and on top of that, as a character trait, is that he was a rogue but he was more of a treasure hunter, not a thief. So because of that, he didn't steal. He doesn't steal from people. So his pickpockets skill, zero points into it. Crap ton of points into uh, find, remove traps, and uh, move silently, hide in shadows and all that. But when it came to actually like lifting off of another person, he sucks at it because he doesn't do that. He's not a thief. He's a treasure hunter. He goes. That's why he's really good at pickling locks and all that, because that skill set makes more sense than just picking pockets. So that's kind of an example. Um, other things you could do would be like, um, uh, 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 you're a fighter, uh, but you don't know how to talk to people. So you're Christmas 8, and you're just really, really abrasive, and you're not really pleasant to talk to, but you have a good heart, and you just, you know, you're just not good at talking to people. Um, think of motivations beyond the simple. One of the most common things I see for characters is, you know, what does your character want? And like 80% of the time, a lot of people who just, so, just say, my character wants money, I want gold pieces, I want treasure, and I want a castle, I just want money. That's fine. Hardly original, but that's okay. You can do that if that's what your character wants. But think beyond that. How can you make that more interesting? Why does your character want money? Or more importantly, why does your character need money? Maybe he has a, a massive debt on his head that he has to pay off, otherwise he'll be assassinated at some point for not paying up. 
Maybe he has a family member who is deathly ill back in his hometown, and the only way to get the medicine for them is if he gets a lot of money to afford it. That's more interesting other than greed. So think about those things when creating your characters. Yeah, again, you don't have to do it, but I think it's awesome. Make them suck at something. I, I always think that gives you a great... Uh, a, a great new dimension to it. Another, another good example of that is uh, Raceland from the Dragonlance series. Amazing powerful wizard. Like, this is the dude you do not mess around with. But, his that character is based off the D&D game, and he had a charisma of like, or a constitution of like five or six. So because of that, he got sick all the time. He couldn't run very fast, and he was always very frail and like coughing up and basically had asthma. But he's an amazing wizard. You don't mess around with him. Just, you know... You could probably beat him in a 100-yard dash. That's interesting. So think of that. Expand on your character's uh, motivations and why they want things. Uh, and just go beyond what you no would normally expect. And with that, with your interesting characters, uh, make interesting characters not the best ones. I also say make interesting choices not the best one. And that can come down to a couple of things. Uh, to, the most relatable I could possibly think of is in combat. Uh, you're fighting a, a, a big monster and you're in a, a, a tavern or something. Okay, um, I stab it. Roll for damage. Again, be descriptive. I try to pierce, go pierce for his heart. Uh, oh, he de deflects at the last minute with the broadside of his axe. Or, again, to make things more interesting, uh, because the best choice would just be to stab at him or something. But it'd be more interesting if you flipped up that table at him, or if you picked up a chair and just swung it at him, or something like that first. Or maybe the sorcerer nearby sets the, the chair on fire, and then you pick the on fire chair up and throw it at him or hit him with it. Like that's interesting. A chandelier. If you see a chandelier above someone, you cut the rope and the chandelier falls down. That's interesting. More than just thunk. Yay. And that's just for combat. I mean. Uh, when it comes to puzzle solving outside of that, you can come up with all kinds of creative things, especially if you're a spellcaster. You can use your spells for so many things. Prestidigitation alone has so many possible uses, or even thaumaturgy for clerics. A lot of possible uses. So try to think of the uh, interesting choices and not necessarily the best ones, because a lot of the best moments that come from Dungeons & Dragons is when someone fails at something. Either they have a really great idea that just doesn't go the way they planned out, or they rolled a 1. Just another thing to consider. Uh, another thing I thought of was uh, kind of going back to being an active player is to, very, very simple, take notes. Just have a pad of paper next to you or um, a Word document if you're playing with compu on a computer or whatever. Uh, just take notes of everything that's going on. Write down NPCs' names. Uh, write down why they're important or what they did for you. Write down a town or what that town's about. Just all these little notes uh, to help remind you of what's going on and what's important. And then uh, you can also use that to help better inform the party. Or if you're going through a dungeon, take your own map. That also helps that players don't need to... They don't get lost, because that could also be a very, very real consequence. So, just another, again, another simple thing to being active. Take notes. If you don't want to roleplay or describe your actions, at least be a note taker. You can do that, right? Um, the file... The, other ones I thought of were not so much the things you can do, but rather the things you don't do. And I hate phrasing it in a, in a sort of negative connotation, but there really is no other way. And I'm just going to say this, and people who have played Dungeons and Dragons or other role-playing games are going to know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's very, very simple. When you're playing, don't be that guy. And everybody knows that guy. Don't be that guy. All right, I'm gonna give you a few examples of what I mean by that guy that no one wants to deal with and no one wants to play with, but he always shows up at these games somehow. These are the guys and players who show up uh, and their characters, they're, they're the characters like, I steal everything, ha ha. Oh, you go into an important NPC meeting with the, the council or whatever. And as you're doing like these really important talks and basically figuring out what the adventure is, that one thief character's like, I pickpocket from all the nobles and I keep their money, ha ha. 
Alright, cool. Welcome to every Skyrim Elder Scrolls player ever. Cool. Very interesting. I steal from other players! Haha, <laughs> that's really funny! Nope, you're an asshole. Don't be that guy. Don't do it! Stop trying to steal everything, that's not interesting. Everyone does that. Anyone who's ever, like I said, anyone who's played any Elder Scrolls game ever steals everything. That's not interesting. Uh, another example is, again, there's always that guy is the lone wolf. You know, the guy who tries to be, you know, dark and mysterious and I don't trust anyone. I always work alone. Your party enters the tavern. Cool. I find a seat alone in the corner. I flip the cloak up over my shoulder and I just watch and I don't actually engage in any of the conversations or the plot or the game. Come on, dude. Don't be that guy. That's not cool. That's not interesting. Dungeons and Dragons is a cooperative game and you're not being cooperative. You're just being a dickhole off on his own who thinks he's cooler than everybody else. And you're not. You look like an idiot. Don't be that guy. Don't try to be the lone wolf kind of character. It just doesn't work in Dungeons and Dragons. Can it work? Yes. But man, you will need to do a lot of out of table discussion with other players and the dungeon master to make it work. But for the sake of simplicity, don't be that guy. Don't try to be the lone wolf. Uh, related, if you are really, really experienced, don't be the rules lawyer. That guy always shows up too. He was like, uh, no, you can't do this because of the stipulation said on page 38 of the Dungeon Master's Handbook, which goes back to page 227 of the Player's Handbook. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, man, no one wants to play with that guy either. You're playing a game to have fun. And if you're going to be playing that strictly to the rules, again, you might as well be playing a video game. The handbooks, they're all around me. Don't, they don't need to be adhered to 100%, especially when it comes down to the Dungeon Master's discretion. Just have fun with it and don't try to be the rules lawyer who wants everything to go exactly like that. Because maybe the DM decided things work slightly differently in his creation. He's allowed to do that. He's the Dungeon Master. Don't try to argue the Dungeon Master because a lot of times what he says kind of goes. I mean, you can still kind of discuss and you find a better solution, but the Dungeon Master is still the official that works the world around you. And you kind of have to listen to him. For the most part, unless the Dungeon Master is clearly being a dick, but I'll get to being a good Dungeon Master later. Uh, also, try to avoid metagaming when being a player. Uh, and the concept of metagaming is thinking of how the world works as a game rather than a world. For example, um, there's, you, you see a cave uh, and there might be dangers inside or... or something. It's a very, this is a very poor, simple example. But as a player, you think to yourself, well, the dungeon master wouldn't put anything that dangerous into it because we're too low of a level. He's not going to kill us that early. My character goes off into the deep dangerous cave. Derp -a derp. That's metagaming. As a player, as a character in that world, and you saw signs of, uh, of, of beholder, residing in this cave, you're not going to go in there. No one's going to mess with the Beholder, but if you try to metagame it and be like, oh, the Dungeon Master wouldn't put the Beholder in there that early. Again, that's another kind of video game thought process that you got to get rid of when you're playing D&D. D&D is not a video game. It, it has completely different rules and a completely different mindset you got to keep in mind when playing it. So, and there's other things like um, knowing a character's backstory and then acting like your character knows it too somehow, and it's, it's sad, or just Taking ideas and concepts from the real world and attributing it to your uh, to your character uh, in an unfair way. Uh, other final thing you can do to be a good player is to help the DM out whenever you can. If the dungeon master has set up a very clear adventure and he's pointing to you, hey guys, that's where the adventure is. That's where we're gonna go have a good time, and you're that guy who says, nah. Let's go over here and steal stuff. Well, now you're being that guy. Try to follow the plot. Like the dungeon master is clearly saying, hey guys, this is where the game is. Go to where the game is and don't try to, don't try to be an adversary to everything. There's no need for it. You're not, it might be fun to you, but you're ruining the fun of everybody else. And you can't do that. It's Dungeons and Dragons. You're trying to have fun with everyone together. It, again, it's a cooperative experience. But above all, 
even with all of these things, the biggest thing you can do as a player, as a dungeon master, or whatever, is just relax. It's just a game. Rules can be changed, rules can be bent, rules can be broken. If it ends up making things more interesting and more fun for everybody, then go with it. You don't, don't worry about trying to make everything as perfect as possible or following the rules 100% or, or whatever. Just relax a little bit. It is a game and you're supposed to have fun with it and that's something you need to keep in mind too. Just have fun and make sure everyone else around you is also having fun. Don't have fun at other people's expense. That's Dungeons and Dragons. Play together and please don't be that guy. <laughs>